This meeting is being recorded. One minute, sir. Tripura, as uh, this meeting is being recorded. Actually, sir, this sir, government sorry of Tripura. To has... you, sir, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, you have got 29 slides and you have got only 10 minutes to present. Yeah, yeah. We will... Okay, we will finish it. So, actually, government of Tripura introduced this project under the title Mukhamantri Unnat Godhan Prakal. It was actually introduction of sex cement for AI in cattle. Actually, in Tripura, cattle rearing is a old, old age old tradition, but people started showing disinterest in this project in cattle rearing because male cattle are not useful in Tripura because agriculture has been mechanized as well as transportation is also not utilized. Cattle is not utilized for transportation. Broad, uh, broad power is not utilized. That's why only for meat production, we are the, using cattle rearing. With this view, government uh, cattle rearer has the dream that only female calves are born. So sex cement is the only option by which we can get 90% female calves out of this AI, AI program. However, but if we use this conventional cement, it is only 50%. With this uh, uh, objective, we have introduced this project from 2021. It was launched by our uh, Honorable Chief Minister on 28-10-2020. We are getting results. Actually, our objective is to uh, get uh, our upgraded hygienic merit cattle, uh, female cattle in our state, which will <coughs> otherwise will benefit the farmers in uh, getting the target of milk production as well as they will get their cattle with good production potential and productivity. And we will also, the state will also get the benefit of uh, achieving the target of milk production in the state and self sufficient in milk production, as well as we, will, uh, we can utilize our these resources for the dairy based industry and entrepreneurship development. So, with this as objective, we started the program. I, 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 we started in our eight districts in total. This meeting is being yes, recorded. Sir. Actually, sex men has the benefit with that, that this is here only X chromosomes are chromosome bearing sperms are utilized for breeding. So, sperm having X chromosome, they, they are. Uh, 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 utilized and we get 90% female calves out of this. This is a very good program because our cattle rearing is only based on the milk production itself. So when these female calves are born, they will be reared and they will be put to the production purpose. That's then. then only we can get the targeted milk production. You see the objective. Our objective is this. Only female calves uh, for dairy sector. Then male calves, they, they, those are not uh, cannot be sold. Then, then they are not useful. So the, we should uh, get rid of this progeny or unwanted sex. This male calves. Then third point is augmentation in milk production. That is very, very important. Our state is showing uh, positive growth in in case of uh, milk production. But our target, whatever target is there, we have not fulfilled. So demand and supply ratio is not. At, at, at par. So that's why we try to, to increase our milk production and uh, sex semen technology is the only option. So with that uh, uh, objectives, we started sex semen based AI. After that, then another program, pro, uh, important thing is that in objective, yeah, we, we, cattle rear has, has very less resources for purchasing the replacement stock. But whenever they are, they are getting this female calves, they, uh, they has no uh, there is the option to utilize this uh, female calves as a replacement stock. So th that cost also be get uh, got rid of. So that is the progr uh, program which will benefit of the cattle farmers as well as the uh, unemployed youth. A, a good number of unemployed is there. They are uh, <laughs> for the income generation, but it is the only option. The milk milk production, if they start, the dairy business will be uh, improved and they will get the benefit from this. And 
the dream of our honorable prime minister the doubling the farmers income will i will go in uh, uh, in work there is the more employment generation both in dairy farming business and dairy based industry will be there so benefits is a social sector scheme it is not a it is for all the society we only dairy farmers are not benefited the consumers benefited per capita availability will be more and then we people will consume more milk because our animal origin protein milk is the only full is it is a balanced nutrient so that it that will get the our farmers will produce this milk and it will be consumed by our consumers so the per capita availability at present is 147 points for 47 gram but it will get increased and it will be at the national uh, at par with the national uh, average so this is our target and there are income generation will be more people as they are funds are utilized for only for the uh, milk cattle and not for bull, bull calf that is the way. target there was only it is the we are the our state is the pioneer state that in the northeast region that we have targeted a good population 156000 would be covered within 3 days 3 years and 3212000 ai would be done at the ratio 2 ai per conception so we are we, we have started this program till that 146254 ai has been done in near about uh, 85000 cattle so our target is to cover 156000 we are hoping that uh, uh, within the project period uh, we will complete this target I mean, all the eight districts has been covered and we are getting benefits each year's targets are targeted and then we put to the work our actually government has given a good chunk of subsidy in this program actually we are purchasing this seximen at the rate of 519 government is given 504 rupees subsidy the government has given good initiative taken a good initiative to popularize this scheme and uh, people are getting the benefits directly from this technology so our uh, goal is to, uh, to get more milk and it's, this subsidy will uh, help people to get uh, this benefit the sex sorter cement technology and it is a it is not so uh, um, old te old technology it is a new technology and we have taken the initiative uh, in the north region for the first time no state in the in the country has taken a, a, this type of big target with uh, seeing our good positive results government of india has uh, sanctioned project for nagaland and manipur also so this is the uh, our goal has been uh, we are getting results our result is that so far 18632 calves have born uh, female calves have born I mean, men cups and uh, female cups ratio is within 90% as 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 at par with our project proposal so we have taken several steps to popularize this scheme so we have uh, we have trained our um, resources uh, animal uh, ai professionals we have trained uh, all the uh, officers and uh, staffs so uh, on this new technology and we have uh, we have popularized uh, to popularize this scheme we have taken many initiatives like mass propaganda mass awareness camp and we have conducted um, special gram sabha in 11178 gram panchayat and village committee in the state all the villages have been covered so uh, our program is going on and our uh, propaganda and mass awareness program also going on we have taken various steps to popularize this scheme we are conducting fertility management camps we are uh, organizing milk uh, milk rallies milk products I mean, really we are organizing cattle show calf rally uh, and uh, animal uh, health camps capacity building camps all are uh, being done to popularize the scheme and to reach out to the people so we, uh, if we do that we can uh, succeed in this program so we are doing this um, uh, uh, another program we have taken 42 numbers of uh, uh, data entry operator and 35 numbers of supervisors have been uh, engaged to supervise the program and also for data uploading in the ina portal that is the government of india portal wherein this uh, uh, all ai data is up, uh, uploaded so uh, and we we are taking this benefit to the farmers doorstep 
with this uh, view, we have trained 94 numbers of new private AI workers. They are doing uh, AI services uh, at the do farmer's doorsteps, and farmers are giving uh, incentive to them, and uh, our, AI, our AI is being done. So uh, we have reached all the people in the state to popularize this uh, scheme. Sir, so our mission is to... You, uh, please conclude in one minute, sir. So um, another program is here. Uh, we, are, we are also introduced this cup growth milk, this balanced ration for the farmers to, uh, to uh, get these females, so female, improve their female survivability, as well as for the, to get early puberty and sexual maturity. With this, uh, that we, have, uh, we are doing a good job and people will benefit from this uh, uh, program. I hope that with that, I conclude. Sir. So these are some of the project implementation photographs and uh, success story. And uh, this is a huge uh, success story and it has happened for the first time in the whole of Northeast India and it has been uh, replicated in other two states also in uh, Nagaland and uh, Manipur. Manipur. Thanks to the success in the case of uh, the state of Tripura. So it is well publicized and in every village of the state it is being implemented and uh, we thought like uh, uh, this should be brought to the notice of, uh, I mean, it, it requires adequate uh, publicity so that other states also aspire to uh, make similar program and uh, help their the farmers of their respective states. So this, uh, these are some of the photographs along with the beneficiaries. Okay, sir. Thank you. Good project. Oh, thank you very much for the opportunity given to us. Uh, thank you all uh, the jury members. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Very good project. No specific question to ask. Thank you. Thank okay. you, sir. Good work. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Nirenjan Singh Rajput is Dr. Nirenjan Singh Rajput is accompanying me. Uh, the first scheme what we have uh, presented for this prestigious award is a Kisan Credit Card. Kisan Credit Card, we have uh, put this under a performance category and this scheme is a Government of India scheme and uh, State of Madhya Pradesh has uh, done considerably well in this scheme. Next. In the starting, I would like to give a brief outlay of this scheme that uh, initially we all know that Kisan credit card was only given to the uh, agriculture farmers. But now, as per the directions from government of India, the Kisan credit card is also being given to livestock owners. Uh, initially, the, person, the farmers who are having the land can only have the uh, Kisan credit card but now the uh, agriculture farmers who are not having land or they are landless, but are having five or more animals can also get this uh, Kisan credit card and can lend from the banks uh, for animal husbandry activities. The scheme uh, covers all the farmers involved in animal husbandry activities for dairy, goat tree, poultry, piggery and other or, and the collateral free loan up to rupees 1.60 lakhs uh, on the marginal rate of interest is being given uh, to the farmers. The KCD sanction is also having under interest subvention at the rate of 2% for short term and 3% for prompt repayment incentive. The Department of Animal Husbandry has uh, received something around 39 lakh 28,555 applications and 378,264 were accepted, out of which till now 1,89,629 farmers of livestock owners has been given this Kisan credit. Uh, sir, sorry to interrupt and you, your this, slides are not moving. Okay. Right, move me. Could you just reshare your screen again and play it on normal mode if you have played on full screen? Normal mode to connect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Picture in table. Ah. 
it's an online figure reported from the uh, bank's portal that Madhya Pradesh has uh, sanctioned the highest number of Kisan credit card for livestock owners, that is 1,89,629. And I must add that this scheme is a flagship scheme for Government of India also. And uh, as per the state of Madhya Pradesh is concerned, it is a tracking scheme for uh, Honorable Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh also. And the department is doing considerably well. The implementation strategy, what we have done to achieve these goals, were that uh, we have made uh, district level nodal officers, we have made district in charge of different officers, the lead bank managers were uh, sensitized and uh, monthly and weekly meeting with the district collectors were done to achieve the targets to fill up the form. The campaign mode was driven as per the directive from Government of India and a fixed day was scheduled uh, with the bankers in each developmental block of the state. The state is having 313 developmental block. On that particular day, a complete camp is organized to fill up the form, the, to scrutiny the form and to sanction the cases. By virtue of all these implementation strategy, the department was uh, uh, has uh, done this uh, KCC sanctioned, uh, which was highest. The uh, outcome of this KCC is that the uh, animal husbandry owners, which are not having uh, next next outcome, bill. outcome. Bill. The, the animal husbandry owners, uh, which are, uh, you see that most of the animal husbandry owners are very, uh, they are marginal farmers or they are landless laborers, which are having some small uh, piece of land or they are landless and they are not having, they are not in the formal banking structures. So by virtue of these cards, they were able to get a lending facility, loan facility, and they have started uh, doing small animal husbandry activities to uh, get some more income. So it's all from my side. Thank you, sir. Uh, very good uh, to the point presentation. Uh, since this, you have uh, exceeded the All India rather performance level uh, as compared to even big states like UP. Uh, when did you start this uh, project? So, 15th November 2021. 15 November. 21 means, uh, can we have some assessment? What is the repayment uh, uh, performance of your uh, farmers? Uh, no, sir, we are not having this because uh, the department was concerned with the issuing of the Kisan credit cards to the livestock owners. After that, uh, the um, how much amount they are taking uh, lending from the banks and what are the uh, repayment issues, uh, department was not uh, on that part. It was uh, purely uh, banking part. But I think you should agree that uh, tracking this vital statistics is also important for the success of this scheme because whatever they have taken bank uh, loan from the bank, they should also faithfully reimburse into or, or uh, repay it to the bank for long-term sustainability of this scheme. Otherwise, this scheme will not be uh, sustainable in a longer term. So you are very right. Uh, before two weeks, uh, additional chief secretary sir were reviewing all these departmental schemes. And in that part, he had also said the same thing what you have said, that now we should focus on the lending part that these uh, owners who have got this Kisan credit card, have they start taking the money from the bank? Have they come into the formal banking structure? And if it's yes, what is the volume of loan they are getting from the bank? So uh, it has been uh, directed to us also by the highest authority of the bank uh, department, mm -hmm. and uh, we will be doing for that also. Doing for that. Also. Okay, okay. But whether the amount is small or big, the issue is not that. But they ultimately, it should not be a become a NPA, and uh, the banks uh, should not be embarrassed with the, whatever they have done. Anyhow, thank you very much. Good thank initiative. You. Congratulations for your um, outstanding performance in disbursing the loan.
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, in your presentation, uh, you, presentation? Have, you have mentioned that around uh, three lakh uh, cards have been issued, uh, and the application were around thirty-five lakh. Mm. Is it? Uh, am I correct, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this means only uh, ten percent uh, of the application have been processed. Why it is taking so long? Yes, sir. Rejected. Ha, ah, sir. This is a very big issue. You see, uh, there is a tendency uh, of uh, rejecting more and more. And even we have uh, uh, placed this issue in the state level bankers committee meeting, and we have given this a uh, uh, raised this issue in front of agriculture production commissioner also, and he has also talked at the SLBC level at the government of India level also that with the very, मतलब uh, you you even some of the banks has given the statement like they are not stapled properly. This was the issue given for rejection. The the papers are not stapled properly, तो वो इधर उधर हो रहा है. That type. So there was an issue of rejection. Actually, what happens that in rural area, ये uh, loan non repayment uh, is a major issue, or bankers are very much hesitant to give uh, this uh, sort of cards to the landless persons. So there I, was a sort of. I, I got it. The banks are not willing to issue the cards. It seems. Yeah. So why don't you uh, try to make it online? The application should be online and uh, Aadhaar enabled. If uh, only one document document need to be submitted uh, online, and then the, the bank will not have any uh, issue like this that uh, it is not being stalled. <laughs> sir, sir uh, this is a very good suggestion. Uh, I must tell you that uh, Samast online one portal uh, one portal has been developed. For this issue, and we are now going to uh, apply online. and make applications online through this portal, okay. this uh, MP online portal, Samas dot MP online. Okay, uh, I wish you all the best. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. This uh, performance performance category, sir. I must tell you that any national animal disease control program is a national level control program by government of india it's 100% funded by government of india it's a very very ambitious program started by government government of india and uh, the the aim the aim behind this program is to control this uh, fmd foot and mouth disease by 2025 and uh, eventually eradication till 2030 in the next few slides i will tell i will tell about the uh, dreadfulness of this disease but before that i must tell you that under this program we are going to have vaccination of the cattle and buffalo population complete cattle and buffalo population of the state with the foot and mouth disease and one more very uh, contagious and uh, dreadful disease that is brucellosis to vaccinate 4 to 8 months female calves of cattle and buffalo for brucella disease these two diseases are having highly economic importance and government of india as i told you that want to control the disease by 2025 uh, by vaccination and eradication by 2030 next slide this uh, uh, scheme will uh, uh, we will increase the domestic production and the major uh, cause to start this program was we are having very adverse effect on the export of the dairy products most of the developed european nations don't export our product because we are not fmd free country so to increase the export from government from uh, our country to uh, these foreign uh, nations it is a uh, it is a call for the time that we should eradicate and declare ourselves as an fmd free uh, country secondly this brucellosis it's a zoonotic disease the disease transfer from uh, animals to uh, the human beings also and it uh, it is a major cause of infertility infertility among the animals bit to the humans to them also so it was second uh, very important disease of highly economic importance and that is why that is why the government has decided to launch this program uh, known as animal uh, national animal disease control program next the control 
so the, the slide is moving. Should I ask? It is moving. Please go thank ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So what I have told earlier, other than this, this control can be achieved by mass vaccination. And this is not a one-time event for foot and mouth disease. A number of rounds has to be given and number of time vaccination has to be done to the complete eligible population. Every six months, the dose has to be repeated to the same animal. And by uh, giving that dose for, um, uh, you can say, eight to ten rounds, we think that now we, can, we are in a position to control this uh, disease. Next. About brucellosis, what I have told you, it's a reproductive disease of cattle and buffalo, it's a bacterial disease, it's endemic in India, and the only, there is no treatment of brucellosis. It's a very important thing that this disease don't have any treatment, either the animal has to be culled, but as you know that cattle, especially cattle cannot be culled. Uh, legally, they are not allowed in our state, especially. So, they are either to be quarantined and they cannot be used. So, to control this disease, the vaccine is the only measure and vaccination is a lifetime vaccine for the same animal. The female calves of 4 to 8 months old has to be given this vaccine and this also has to be repeated number of times to the other target population because it's a lifetime vaccine. Next. So uh, this uh, vaccine, this program has two uh, steps. One is to tag the animal. Now, uh, what is tagging? Under this scheme, we have to uh, tag the animal with unique identification tags. These are UID tags which are having a unique number all over the India. Government of India gives these tag numbers through NDDB to us. These animals are to be tagged and then to be vaccinated. But not only tagging, after tagging, the whole record of these animals are to be placed online on the ENAF portal, that is information network for animal productivity and health. It's a uh, portal of government of India, shortly known as INAPH ENAF uh, portal. The moment we tag the animal, we put the tag number on the portal and we put the whole of the information about his owner, about his breed, about uh, the age, the productive status, uh, all these things in the uh, portal. So now this is known as animal registration. And after that, whenever we will vaccinate the animal, the data of vaccination is also to be put on the same portal. So the complete record is online and can be verified at any uh, point of time. Now, secondly, uh, the, uh, the way that whether actually the animal has been vaccinated or not, then there is a process of zero monitoring and zero surveillance. A sample size and the selected villages are identified. Their serum, serum has been taken 21 days prior to the vaccination. And then second serum is taken 21 days after the vaccination. And the titer is tested. If titer is up to the level, then we can say that yes, we are having the animal population vaccinated. So, in a length of time of 5-6 years, if that titer is maintained in a uh, constant way, then we say yes, now we are able to, uh, uh, to control the disease. One thing. Then this unique program is having a uh, very vast uh, measurement process such as cold chain infrastructures are to be developed, uh, the health cards are to be given, the enough portal has to be uh, done. Next. Now, uh, when we say that uh, we have done considerably well in this program, so it's also very important that we should know that what is the animal husbandry status of Madhya Pradesh. As per 20th livestock census, the state is having 187.52 lakhs cattle, which is third highest in the country. And we are having 9.73% of the uh, cattle population. Secondly, we are having 1 crore 3 lakh 103.507 lakhs buffaloes, which are fourth highest in the country. And we share have 9.38% of the buffalo population of the country. Our state is third highest milk producer, producer of the country. And states per capita milk production is 469 lakhs kg. We are having 
563 grams per capita availability per day for our citizens of Madhya Pradesh, which is more than the national average of 394 grams. But seeing this vast animal husbandry population, it was a very big task to vaccinate the whole of the population, to tag the population. I must say, uh, next, you are saying it's possible. You are seeing the slide that the state has vaccinated in the first round 250 lakhs, 59,000 cattle buffalo population of the state. State is having 291 lakh cattle buffalo population. The whole of the population cannot be vaccinated. Technically, the population which is pregnant, which are sick, and which are below four years of four months of age, they cannot be vaccinated. So the actual figure which was available for vaccination was around 251, 252 lakh. And we have vaccinated 250.59 lakh, which is on the portal in the uh, public domain. And by this, we have benefited more than 80 lakh, uh, 9,000 farmers of the, of the state. And you can see that we are third highest in uh, livestock population. We are having UP and Rajasthan, more livestock population, even then we have vaccinated and benefited more livestock owners than any other state in the country and we were highest in the country. If, next, if we go for uh, this Brusela vaccination, once again you can say, you can see that Madhya Pradesh was highest with uh, 27,92,000 livestock population of 4 to 8 months age female calves were vaccinated and 18 lakhs farmers were benefited. Once again, we were the highest in the country. The major the major tool which was which has made us uh, made us capable to uh, take this data was animal registration and you can see that we have registered 292.64 lakh animals in the enough portal now we can see that you can ask that your state is having population of 292 lakhs and you have tagged the same population you see in this uh, we don't in enough portal we, we, we are not able to delete the dead, dead animals. So naturally, this uh, 292 figure of tagged animal is also having those animals which have which are now uh, not with us and they are dead animals. So in a span of time, it will happen that number of tagged animals will be more than the number of actual uh, livestock population. But uh, as a uh, figure we are have, having from field updates, almost 90% of the cattle buffalo population of the state has been tagged with UID tags and the data has been put on the enough portal of government of India and once again you can see we are highest in the country. Next, the implementation study to do, to do this work was as per the guidelines of government of India, three level committees has to be made, state level monitoring units, district level monitoring units and block level that we have done. That was under the government of India. Uh, but other than that, what we have done? We have done the micro level planning up to the village level. We have may, make that uh, vaccination schedule for each and every village date wise and that data was taken at the directed level also. So that any point of time I can say that I want to go to that village. Today they are having vaccination. If the team is not there, we take some action. Secondly, district level officer, district level in charges were made, regular visits, surprise visits were done by the additional chief secretary and director and random verification call from our call center was also uh, done uh, to the livestock owners to verify whether vaccination has been done or not. Next. Outcome of this, that livestock of the state is now identified, tagged. The complete record of that animal is now online on the ENAF portal by virtue of this Brussels and FMD. FMD has a considerable effect on the productivity of the animal. If we control this disease, the animal productivity certainly be, uh, it has been uh, increased. The disease outbreak of these two diseases has considerably brought down. Naturally, uh, if the animals are healthy, there is an increase in milk production and uh, this uh, animal registration has also made us to uh, have a good data of cattle insurance and the beneficiary oriented scheme in where cattle induction has been done. They can also be identified by virtue of these uh, tagged animals. 
So thank you very much. This is from my side. Uh, queries are welcome. धन्यवाद सर ये काफी अच्छा प्रयास है आपका जहाँ तक मेरी नॉलेज है ब्रोसेला की वैक्सीन तो काफी लंबे टाइम से अवेलेबल है और एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन हो सकती है आपने जैसे पहले प्रोजेक्ट में अभी बताया था किसान क्रेडिट कार्ड जो बैंक से आपने लोन दिलाए क्या उसमें भी एक कंडीशन इंसर्ट हो सकती है कि भाई आप ये इंश्योर करेंगे कि आपके एनिमल को वैक्सीन भी लगे क्या ऐसी कोई कंडीशन क्रिएट कर सकते हैं प्रयास यह है की के सी सी क्यों मतलब जिसके पास हमें तो हंड्रेड परसेंट पॉपुलेशन हर साल वैक्सीनेट करनी ही है अनाज में ये तो हमारा ही मैंडेट है आपका मैंडेट तो है लेकिन बात यह ना कि आपकी जहाँ तक जो साइज है ना जो आपका टीम साइज है वो जनरली ब्लॉक लेवल पे ही एक ब्लॉक होता है वहां पे ही वेटरनरी डॉक्टर होता है आपकी टीम इतनी ज्यादा भी बड़ी भी नहीं है कि भाई आपके ऊपर ही सारा बोझ लाद दिया जाए जो फार्मर है जो ओनर है उसकी भी जिम्मेदारी है कि वो टाइमली वैक्सीनेट कराए वो ब्लॉक ले जाए या फिर आपको वहां बुलाए मतलब तो उसकी भी कुछ जिम्मेदारी है ऐसा नहीं कि बैंक से लोन लिया और बैठ गया तो क्योंकि आप आई नो अक्रॉस ऑल स्टेट्स एक ही जैसी हालत है कि गवर्नमेंट जिस हिसाब से मिनिमम गवर्नमेंट मैक्सिमम गवर्नेंस हो रही की बात हो रही है तो वो हर एक जगह लागू नहीं होती सही भी नहीं होती है तो गवर्नमेंट का इतना बड़ा साइज भी नहीं कि वो हर एक जगह गांव गांव जा करके सारे को वैक्सीन मिले थोड़ा सर मैं थोड़ा मैं एड ऑन कर दू आपकी बात से पूर्णतः सहमत होते हुए वन थिंग इज दैट कि स्टेट में ब्लॉक लेवल के नीचे भी इंस्टीट्यूशन हैं क्योंकि जो हमारी डिस्पेंसरीज और सब सेंटर्स होते हैं वो बिलो द ब्लॉक लेवल होते हैं तो हम ये कह सकते हैं कि स्टेट ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश का जो वेटनरी इंस्टीट्यूशन का साइज है वो 10 से 12 पंचायतों में एक संस्था आती है हमारे यहाँ एक बात तो सही है लेकिन कोल्ड चेन हर जगह नहीं होती उसको ले जाना फिर लाना भी पड़ता है सर मैं एड ऑन करना चाह रहा हूँ सर उसी में बता रहा था आपको मैं कि क्योंकि इस प्रोजेक्ट में कोल्ड चेन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर में काफी बजटिंग दी गई तो व्हाट वी हैव डन प्रीवियसली सर आपकी बात से मैं बिल्कुल सहमत हूँ हम अपने पूरे स्टेट में सारी वैक्सीन एक जगह स्टोर करते थे ना पहली बात है कि मेरे पास हर डिस्ट्रिक्ट में मेरे पांच पांच लाख वैक्सीन डोज स्टोर करने लायक वॉक इन कूलर्स मैंने स्टेब्लिश कर दिए वन थिंग उसके बाद में नीचे गया सर ब्लॉक लेवल पे तो मेरे हर ब्लॉक लेवल हॉस्पिटल्स पे मैंने सर आइसलाइन रेफ्रिजरेटर दो दो दे दिए जो कि चालीस चालीस हजार वैक्सीन डोज कैपेसिटी के उसके बाद सर मैं नीचे गया अस्पतालों में अस्पतालों में सर रेफ्रिजरेटर्स दे दिए पांच पांच हजार कैपेसिटी लोड करने की और फिर सर वहां जो मेरा फील्ड का अमला है उनको हमने दिए वैक्सीन कैरियर पांच पांच लीटर वाले जान के जो की गाड़ी में कैरी कर सके उसमें रख दे प्रॉब्लम रहती सर दूसरी बात सर एक और सर स्टाफ की बात सर आपने बिल्कुल सही कहा स्टाफ सर बहुत बड़ी प्रॉब्लम है हर जगह संस्थाएं है वो खाली है सर इस स्कीम में क्या है सर की ऑनरेरियम बेस्ड स्कीम है सो वी है गौसेवक विच आर ट्रेन फॉर सिक्स मंथ फॉर वेटनरी एड गौसेवक देन बैक्ट्रीज देन द डेरी सोसाइटी वर्कर्स then uh, this pashu sakhi and then gopal this five type of private persons were also taken and involved in this program because we were able to give them uh, onrarium onrarium was on the account 3 rupees for vaccination 2 rupees for data entry total 5 rupees so because this onrarium we were having a big team now because officially to mere paas sirf 3000 uh, avfos the but because yes. of this साइज वी हैव कंसीडर बिग साइज ऑफ अराउंड 8 टू 10000 टेक्निकल पर्सन वर डिप्लॉयड फॉर दिस वैक्सीनेशन प्रोसेस और ओनली बिकॉज़ ऑफ दैट इट हैज हैपेंड फ्रूटफुली तो ओके लास्ट क्वेश्चन सर देयर वाज लंपी स्किन डिजीज एलएसडी अक्रॉस मेनी स्टेट्स इन इंडिया व्हाट हैज बीन द पोजीशन इन योर स्टेट सर इन स्टेट वाज कंसीडरेबली लकी we were having uh, this uh, disease outbreaks not outbreaks we should say we were having sporadic cases in around 30 districts out of which okay. 17 districts were having good size of cases okay. but fortunately 
uh, as per reports, only 27,000 cases were reported in which animals were having this uh, disease symptoms and uh, something around 300 animals found dead uh, because of the disease, rest all uh, recovered. And we have vaccinated almost 30 lakh doses of goat pox vaccine to the susceptible and infected areas population of livestock. That was the thing. Nowadays, now we are having no case of lumpy and we are having uh, surplus vaccine also. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you, please. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. No specific question. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, then, uh, and uh, regarding the Tamil Nadu, when you talk of a Tamil Nadu, it means it is the second, third largest state in the protection of handlooms. We have approximately 1 lakh looms are there, and we have around some 2.49 uh, uh, weavers are dependent on the handlooms. In addition to that, we also have uh, these power looms. Now, we are not talking about the power looms, we are talking only of the handlooms. The market share is that the Tamil Nadu share in the, of the handloom is around some 7.7 percentage. And uh, with regard to the worker share in handloom, it is a 6.9 percentage. So what is happens is that this uh, Tamil Nadu has a rich uh, cultural heritage and it has got a natural uh, ecosystem. And uh, almost, uh, almost we have around 37 uh, districts in the state. Uh, 20 districts have got uh, natural clusters. They have their own weaving techs, weaving uh, techniques are also there. They have their own weave patterns are there. So this is the very important thing. Uh, Tamil Nadu uh, handlooms is one of the very important thing and the national uh, uh, space also. And we have around some 52 clusters are there. Uh, clusters are there and uh, the clusters are uh, making some production of the cloth and we have been uh, marketing through the pop-ex. So actually, when you talk of a 2.44 lakh handloom weavers, around 60% of the handloom weavers are under the cooperative fold, whereas the cooptex is an apex society for that. And uh, under the cooptex, we have uh, members, 1,107 cooperative societies are the members. And uh, the private brands also, apart from the cooperative fold, we have around 40% are in the private thing. So we have, they have their own master weavers and the 40% of them in the unorganized sectors. So Tamil Nadu has a potential in the sense that it has around some uh, cultural legacy spanning more than some thousand uh, uh, thousand uh, years or so. Sir, I can see your first slide only, sir. Are you on the first slide? Oh, I'm in the third slide. I'm in the third slide. Just move the slides. Sir. And what are the real challenges we face in that we don't have a specific uh, clear, unique selling proposition for the handloom given the technology and automation. And the other thing is that we have a very, uh, that uh, the earning support for the livelihood of the viewers is very minimal. So we want to upscale it also. So next slide. So here, what we come in the, uh, come in the picture. So basically we are talking about a cooptex, which is an apex marketing societies. It has got around 1,117 handloom viewers, uh, uh, silk and cotton societies are there. We have around some 150 retail room, uh, our showrooms are there, 49 outside the Tamil Nadu. Next. So the transformative initiative done by the Cooptex is that in terms of the design, it has collaborated earlier, it was not that. We have collaborated with the National Institute of Fashion Design, uh, Bangalore as well as in uh, Chennai. And we also collaborated with the National Institute of Design, Ahmedabad, so to help the weaving clusters with the design intervention. The other is thing, the raw material sourcing, we try to facilitate the societies. Uh, we take it from the cooperative uh, spinning mills also. The weaving techniques, we have been telling them about the new weaving techniques. Marketing cooptex have been making a lot of verticals, new verticals for doing a market interventions. The sales of cooptex as on date is around some 300 pros. So and we want to establish ourselves as a, one of the market leader. The next thing. So one of the part is that the, we have started uh, opening new showrooms. Almost 38 showrooms have been uh, opened in my in the period of one year also. We have also created an exclusive handloom mall. Next slide. The product positioning is that we try to have a specific shop also. One is for the organic collections. This is a new thing which you have done it for the men's uh, shirts, men's lungis and dhotis and export products. We have different uh, verticals, different uh, products, exclusive shops you have done it. 
As I said earlier about the design intervention part, we already had a tie up with them. So they have been rolling out around some more than some 500 designs also. So we are trying to, we are multiplying, multiplying the designs through our societies and we are marketing them. The other thing is that uh, this is a trade fair. After a gap of 10 years, we have started uh, the trade fair in the Coptex uh, thing. Almost 100 handloom societies across the country, they have taken part in that. They have sold uh, materials worth five crore thing also. The next is that. The product automation, authentications, what we have done is that a new intervention is the weaver's cart, wherein they can trace out the weaver, the, the product, the saris, whatever saris they have been purchasing it, they can find out who has woven the sari. Likewise, we also have a jerry authenticity card, we have introduced it, but that will give the exact composition of the gold and the silk component, silk content in the jerry card. The next. So we have also given a space, we have been concentrated on the inclusive growth of viewers, especially for the tribals and the marginalized section of the people who want to accommodate them. So we give them space for our marketing thing and we purchase the products and promote the product also. Next. So the technological intervention for the first time in the country, we have started using this uh, uh, yeah. IoT-based devices also. So we have taken it on a trial basis in 100 societies and uh, wherein uh, uh, we have been uh, engaging our consultant, we have been working on that. The other thing apart is that, as I said earlier, as I flagged in the thing, earlier it was the, the viewers are not properly been incentivized, incentivized. So we decided to give a minimum support to the viewers. 15,000 rupees we are paying to the viewers and we signed an MOU with the viewers, societies also. 382 viewer societies, we have signed an MOU with them. So as I said, the design support and the internship, we have gone to the, one of the important issues of the handloom sector is that a lot of people have been uh, moving out from the provision because of the lack of uh, uh, reasonable wages, reasonable salary packages. So we want to encourage the youngsters also, uh, giving some uh, weaving uh, uh, the, uh, to promote an entrepreneurship also. Skill developments, we have been giving a lot of skill developments and other thing also. The next is uh, uh, the market outreach and the technology, as I said earlier, about the IoT based thing. Another thing is about the block cube technology, we want to do the thing also, so that the workers in any part of the globe, they can have a taste the thing, of the product, where the produce have been made also, which product has been, which weaver has done the thing. So likewise, we want to encourage the thing, or encourage the youngsters also, so we are focusing more on putting more youngsters in the, our thing. The next is about the value. Next, The value we've increased earlier, it was around some 200 crores. Now we have made it to 300 crores. That is the impact it has created. And we are the one who have been following this fair trade practices also. And our products are sustainable and eco-friendly products. Our products are organic hand own products. And we are not using any child labor. And this is one thing where we have gone to Istanbul and the concert general is also there. With that, and uh, we have been recognized as one of the as the organization which is meant for the weavers promotions, meant for the promoting the livelihood support to the weavers. So, designing what is the vision of forward? So, we want to create a design studio, a state of art design studios where we will have a tie up with the, the top designers of the world from New York to uh, Milan, Italy, New York, uh, USA. We want to rope in all the designers. Try to give the cumulative knowledge, the design views, patterns, and other thing also. That is one intervention which you have been trying to do that. The second thing is about the handloom museum. For the first time in the country, we want to do it in the handloom museum in a very big way also. Then the geotagging. So we want to do it interventions in terms of providing a geotagging for the handloom societies also. So that there will, will not have the, the, the database, we'll have a steady database of the authentic database of the how many people have been involved in the thing, what is the production capacity, what are the products they've been doing it. And the fourth is about the authenticity body. So we want to, pro we are promoting and Tamil Nadu for, for the products originating from Tamil Nadu. We want to give a authenticity body. We are creating a cell in that. So they are all in the pipeline. So this is about the renovation part. This is the Egmore showroom. The next slide is about the Bangalore showroom, what it was and what it is now, the Rajaji showroom. Another is about the Paramlu showroom, Vijinagar showroom, Palani showroom. So this is all from my answer. I think I'm well within the time limit.
sir very good presentation in fact uh, you have been supporting so, such a large uh, about 2.44 weavers it yes. is a large one of the largest employment generating exercise uh, are you what are you doing for uh, promoting the younger generation into this uh, area uh, sir we are giving a design support to the younger. we want to create more of an entrepreneurs young entrepreneurs and we are also trying to associate you know once we give a training to them and after the training we want to get uh, them loans also so that they'll they can create a prepare they can set up their own boutique also and we have some we have an internship model also they can come here they can spend some six months here and they can work on that thing also so they'll know what are the nuances of that so this is the thing scheme which has started started probably within uh, after one year only we know how what is the impact it has created how many new entrepreneurs you have created and what are they doing subsequent to, to the training part of it so probably we may be able to tell only after a gap of one year also sure sir sure okay thank you sir thank, thank you. you sir any other question sir uh, thank you sir no specific question okay thank you sir thank you hey. sir is it audible sir yes sir you are audible Sir. Yeah, sir. So this is from Karnal Municipal Corporation, sir. So uh, our topic is wet waste to organic fertilizer, sir. Actually, we, we know that uh, industrialization and urbanization has improved uh, the city. And along with that, the population has also improved because many people from the rural areas, they will come to the uh, cities as as per that, the waste that is produced in the municipal corporations has been increased a lot. So management of this solid waste in the municipalities has become a huge task. So planning to properly maintain or to properly control this waste production and also to process this waste has become a big task for the municipal corporations. So actually we are coming with a, a strategy where we can collect, we can collect the total waste from all households and all commercial entities. So we have come up with a new strategy wherein we have collected all the waste from all entities of this Karnal Municipal Corporation. And the basic strategy is, we have made awareness, IESA activities to all people, to all people through a special team. Generally, we call them as a, uh, uh, SHG team, self-help groups. We have involved all these people to aware the general public and also the commercial entities. Along with this, we also availed the municipal workers and also the staff, those who are working in this municipality. So these IEC activities we have uh, done in a huge manner so that the people has been changed. They have been changed and they started the source segregation, which is the main motto to collect 100% waste in two forms, that is wet waste and dry waste. So the wet waste, which we have collected, generally we have transferred to this dump yard where we have our plant, uh, the wet waste to compost because we are following the window composting method. So by this, uh, we have converted the wet waste to organic fertilizer. So the main motto is to collect 100% wet waste, 100% wet waste. And for this, we have applied a special strategy because from the households, we can collect through the municipal uh, autos. We have uh, uh, segregated autos. From there, we are collecting this wet waste and also dry waste separately. But collecting the waste from the commercial entities, it has become a 
big problem because those people uh, they will open the shops in the uh, around 10 am where the municipal workers they will complete their work and they will go so for this actually we prepared a special uh, uh, collection from the commercial shops in two times that is in the morning around 10 to 12 and also in the evening 6 to 8 two uh, times we are collecting from the commercial entities and also as we have removed total bins dumper bins from the kernel municipal corporation this has reduced the waste this has reduced the waste in the city so because we are doing 100 percent collection so for this we have removed the dumper bins all those things so there is no waste on the roads or any surrounding places thereby you have reduced the waste and thereby the health uh, of the public has been improved and also we started uh, we made it mandatory for each commercial unit to keep their bins waste collection bins and from the shops our autos will go and collect that waste so thereby you have reduced the even the litter bins also we have removed the dumper bins and we have reduced the litter bins and we made it mandatory for the shops to uh, produce their waste in a separate bin so that it it, it won't come onto the roads or it won't uh, uh, come onto the roads so in this way we have planned to collect the 100% 100% wet waste and uh, uh, dry waste separately. And we have taken this total wet waste into the dumping yard where we have our plant, uh, the wet waste to uh, wet waste to. This we have started by January 2021 and uh, till now we have nearly produced around 477 tons of organic fertilizer and this organic fertilizer has been, has been given in free form to some people and also it was sold at cheaper rate and so that this uh, has generated some revenue to the Kernel Municipal Corporation also. When come to revenue uh, perspective of this management waste management, we have we have thought about the how the method of uh, processing waste rate processing. We conclude that the old age old method of window uh, window composting is the best uh, per cost best cost uh, cost efficient method, and we 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 came with uh, some uh, basic infrastructure like uh, cocoa pit mission filter mission like with. Uh, very low cost uh, equipment we have arranged with which each each cost with one lakh only that is the only the capital expenditure we have uh, with this with uh, waste processing and the uh, operational expenditure for operational cost for uh, one uh, for one ton uh, with waste is the cow dung and uh, panchagavya decomposed jaggery uh, it's uh, it's like all our all around the only uh, we have to spend on the one ton of the the same time, the same time we are selling one ton of wet waste uh, at the cost of one five rupees per kg, then uh, that is five thousand per ton. In the by selling this uh, this amount, this minimal amount, we are getting four times profit uh, from uh, from preparation of one ton of wet waste, uh, wet, uh, uh, like organic fertilizer. For example, well, in the in this year, we have made uh, we have uh, prepared for 477 tons of uh, wet, uh, organic fertilizer. We around we can, we can, we get around 25 lakhs of revenue generation we got there from this preparation. And uh, it lies uh, <clears throat> in this manner we we are getting very co we are four times profit uh, revenue profit apart from environmental benefits. It's apart from environmental health and benefits we are also getting revenues. It is uh, at, the, at this moment we are uh, percent amount of 
going to scale up we are we are uh, we are uh, our infrastructure not sufficient for we are for from for uh, processing of the collected with waste we are going to scale up in the next year next year uh, with infrastructure development okay thank you thank you sir thank you for the, giving this opportunity sir uh, thank you sir good effort uh, you have indicated that uh, your wet waste you are converting to organic uh, fertilizer but uh, what about fertilizer. recycling of the, what about recycling of the dry waste yes sir we we have the mr facility and we are doing that uh, recycling process and we are selling some of the parts and also we are giving uh, uh, rack pickers we are encouraging the rack pickers how sir? much material how much waste you are able to recycle percentage wise yeah, because uh, we are getting around uh, uh, 60 tons per day sir okay 60 tons per day of dry waste mm -hmm. and uh, it has been uh, separated into six types and sure. uh, we have given uh, jobs for these rack pickers those people they will come and they will separate and they will take out that and they will sell and they will get their income so no, my, my question is how much out of these 60 tons or whatever you are saying per day how much yes, a, you are able to recycle how much percentage and the rest has to be uh, uh, yeah, yeah, landfill. To, move to the landfill or to site. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, nearly 70 to 80 percent, sir. Good, good, good. 70 to 80 is fair enough. So 72, yeah, 70 to 80 percent. Mm -hmm. For that only, actually, uh, we have given a livelihood to these rag pickers, especially at sure. the dumping yard. Okay, okay, because... Yes, sir, thank uh, you. They are very important component in the whole exercise. Good, thank you. Yes, please. sir. Actually, the pla sir. Good. The thank plastic you, waste actually. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good. Uh, have, have you yeah. thought of uh, converting uh, waste into uh, energy as well? No, sir. Yes, thermal energy. But that is a better way of doing it. But we don't have the plant, sir, waste to energy plant. But uh, uh, plastic waste, we are sending it to cement factories, sir. Okay. For, uh, yeah, for, the, converting. for the long run, I think you should have that sort of a plan. Yeah, yeah, waste to energy plant. If once we'll get really, it's uh, very encouraging and we can do more, uh, I mean, uh, this type of uh, new strategies we can apply and we can produce, sir. Okay. Good. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.